Yo, what's up guys, it's Talon. Today I'm going to be talking about Jace. I actually reached rank 1 on Jace a couple days ago, so I wanted to give you guys a bit of a Jace guide. Um, as you can see on my profile here, hit rank 1 as you can see under there. Uh, currently we're at rank 2, because I haven't played for a couple of days. But yeah, let's just get into the build first, and then we'll get into the rest of the video after that. Okay guys, so now onto the build. So there's two types of builds that I'll go. Typically I'll either go with a Hallbreaker first, and then I'll build a bit Bruiser-like, or I'll also go for Lethality, which is going to be Armor Penetration. So I'll typically go the Hallbreaker build into champions in the mid lane that don't have good wave clear. Um, in top lane, this build is also very good. But in mid lane, I'll go it into champs that don't have good wave clear and that can't deal with me on the side lane. This also makes me more versatile in the late game because instead of only having to rely on my poke and team fights, I can also go to the side lane and pressure other sides of the map while my team is getting objectives. So after the Hallbreaker, you go for Black Cleaver. Then you'll get Merc Treads. You could also get Plated Steel Caps or Ionian Boots. Just depends. Then you either go Cerildas or you go for Mortal Reminder. Mortal Reminder into comps with a lot of healing and Cerildas otherwise. Next you could go Sterics or you could go GA or you could go Death Stance or you could go Twin Guard. So the, these four items, GA, Sterics, Twin Guard, and Death Dance are the four items that you want to go in these two slots just depending on what you need. You could also go Ma. Ma is the fifth choice. So Ma you would want to go instead of Sterics if they have um, a lot of AP. Otherwise you can go Sterics if they have a bit of mix. And if they have a lot of AD, then you could go Death Dance in the slot of Sterics. And then typically I just always like Twin Guard last item, but GA is fine too if they have a lot of attack damage again. The second type of build that I'll typically go for, um, here I need to find Yomus, my bad, one second, is going to start with Yomus. Um, it'll either start with Yomus or Serpents. So you start Serpents Fang if they have a lot of shielding, you start Yomus in any other situation. After that, you'll go for the Black Cleaver again. It'll make you a bit tankier and give you that good damage. Then you'll typically want Ionian Boots with this build because it's more about your poke. But if they have a lot of CC, you can still go for Merc Treads. And if they have a lot of auto attackers, you can still go for Steel Caps. Uh, you're going to want Stasis in this build as well, as you would with any build. Then you either go Cerildus or Mortal again. After that, you're going to probably want to go Edge of Night instead of Sterics here for the additional poke. And then lastly, Twin Guard or GA or something like that. Um, those are the two builds. Again, I would recommend the Hallbreaker one that I showed first, but this uh, one is especially good into squishies going to this poke build. So if you're into a lot of squishies, probably go for this one. For the runes, there's two choices. There's Conqueror and there's Electrocute. Some people like Phase Rush, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. So I'm just going to talk about Conqueror and Electrocute. Conqueror, you would typically want to go into tankier champs or champs that are easy to auto attack because you can easily stack up the Conqueror with your second ability in range form. Um, if you don't want that, then you can go for Electrocute. If I could find it, there's Electrocute, and you typically want to do this when you want to stomp your lane and when you're into a lot of squishies, because Electrocute allows you to get a quick combo on people and burst them down really fast, and it also makes your laning stronger than Conqueror's laning. Next, I'll always go for Triumph, but you could go for Brutal if you wanted, though. Again, I would recommend Triumph in almost every situation. Bone plating, I will also usually go. You could go second win in really difficult matchups, but as Jace, you're usually going to be bullying the lane, so Bone plating is going to allow you to trade well. And then Demolish, I'll always go as well. Uh, just super good for taking turrets, and if you stomp your lane, you get some gold. And then you go Ignite and Flash, basically, in every situation as well. So that's going to be it for the builds. Now I'll go on to explaining the abilities. And then after I explain his abilities, I will talk about some examples on how to play them in-game. Okay, guys, so I already, in a previous video, explained how Jace's abilities work, but I'm just going to go over it really quickly again. So Jace has two forms. He has his range form and his melee form, which you can switch between by using your ultimate. First, I'll talk about the abilities in the, in the range form, which our first ability is just a simple little shock blast there that just does some damage. Second ability, if you click it, you get auto attack, three fast auto attacks. You can also use it as an auto reset, so you can auto attack, click it, auto, 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 very fast. Third is a little sh thing here where if you walk through it, you get movement speed. And additionally, if you put it out, it makes your shock blast go further if you shoot it through it. You can also click your first ability a second time to make the shock blast go like that. Next, so switching your uh, ultimate, going to melee form, you have a jump, which does damage. You have something that does damage around you, um, which is your second ability. And your third ability knocks stuff back, like that. And lastly, it's important to note that you gain mana by auto-attacking in the melee form. So whenever you're low on mana, make sure you auto-attack in the melee form. Now I'm going to talk about the most important combo, or just the combos on Jace. So again, first is auto-attack and W, um, and getting, autos, like getting an auto-reset faster. Secondly is using your Shock Blast like that, again, like I said there. Um, the next important one is that you can use your second ability in range form, and then after that, switch to your melee form and get three fast melee attacks. So like this, watch. One, two, three, really fast. 
And that's going to be very important for the full damage combo, which I'm going to talk about now. So the maximum possible damage you can get from your combo works like this. I need to kill this thing. This thing is annoying me. Okay. The maximum damage you can get from your combo is first using your first ability combined with your third ability, getting bonus damage and range. Then you go, you auto attack, click your second ability, auto attack right away again, switch to your melee form, jump, auto, knock them back and auto them again. Well, if you do it properly, while you're knocking them back, you can actually auto attack a second time like I did there. You can see I autoed him while he's getting knocked back. So now I'm going to show you that um, in as fast as I can again doing it so that you guys can kind of understand what it looks like so it's going to be like this auto boom jump auto and then i knock him back and i auto again spamming the auto attack button um if you guys don't really understand that i can try to explain it better again later but that's essentially the combo also make sure that you're clicking your second ability in melee form when you jump on someone to get that extra damage as well um so that's going to be like the the basic damage combo it's very important to understand like switching between forms getting maximum damage as fast as you can doing stuff like that um, and so now we'll get into some examples of actual gameplay and laning and stuff for Jace. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about an easier lane matchup. This is going to be Katarina. I'm really going to explain to you guys how to bully bad laners. And then after this, we'll go over a more stable, uh, difficult lane matchup. But Jace is generally really good in almost every matchup. So typically when you're into these types of matchups, you want to just be starting in your range form, into Assassins especially. And you're okay with letting them farm a little bit level um, 1. But what you want is you want the wave to be on your side of the map level 2. So what you're going to see that I do here is I'm going to auto him and then drag drag the wave back once I get um, the wave targeting me. So I auto him and then I try to drag it back so that it comes further back. Since there wasn't um, a melee, it didn't go as far as it normally would. If there's melee minions instead of just range, then it's a better time to do that. So I didn't do that at the correct time there. And then you just want to play on the sides of the wave and poke them out as they kind of clear their way. You see here, I'm letting him clear the wave so that I can just freeze it on my side of the map. Even though I have the advantage level 1, I don't have to abuse my advantage level 1. Instead, I can wait until he greets for the farm because he's pushing it towards me. So even though I'm not pushing my advantage level 1 as hard as I could, what I'm doing instead is setting up the wave in a way where it's going to be really hard for him levels 2 and 3 where he's still weak to not really do much. So again, he's wasting his uh, first ability on me so that he can't farm my minions, meaning he's going to have to dash to the minions. This makes it easy for me to poke him out and deal damage to him when he tries to go for the minions. Again, you see here he goes for the minions, so I get a free jump on him. The wave is still in my spot. This not only makes him gankable, but also, again, lets me just poke him out. So you can see here, I continue to try to bully him off the wave as he tries to go for it since it's on my side of the map. And by levels 3 or 4 is when the wave is going to start pushing back into them because that's just how it works. And by this time, you want to fight for Scuttle because typically your jungler is going to be around Scuttle. So I see I saw my jungler on the top side of the map by theirs. And so I decided to try to help him. However, it didn't end up working out. But then you see here, he greets for the farm and I get an easy kill on him there switching between my forms and getting a lot of damage and then just getting the kill so really the important thing is into these matchups level one make sure you're trying to drag the wave to your side of the map so then he has to come to you to farm making it very easy to end up getting uh setting yourself up for a level three or four solo kill because he's going to take a lot of damage from trying to farm that wave and then by level four or five is when you crash the wave into their tower and then you either get a nice back off and get a power spike or you end up getting the kill or helping your jungle with scuttle just all those different types of things that it allows you to do because of how you manage your wave in these matchups. Okay guys, so I actually didn't plan on doing this, but I forgot that I actually have a top lane example because I was autofilled to top lane playing Jace and I was against a Renekton, so I thought I'd show you guys how to play it in top lane as well. Top lane, you're typically going to want to go Conquer instead of Electrocute, unless you're into a really squishy matchup. And so you're much more focused around playing around, uh, backing up that Conqueror and then having longer trades with people. And Renekton is going to be a bit more of a difficult matchup. You can see here, I just keep trying to auto attack him. That way, I already have my uh, Conqueror stacked up. It means that I can easily trade with him and, and just keep poking him out. Because a lot of times in the Baron lane, you're going to be playing against ranged matchups. Which means level 1, you're going to have the decision on what you want to do. More often, you're going to want to take your second ability here. Um, due to the fact that you can stack it up really easily onto these melee champs that are a bit more tanky and bruiser-like. And so you can see here, I'm mostly just focused around... Auto attacking while not letting him get too close or attack me. I'm just trying to get as much poke as possible early on in the lane while not letting him do too much. Uh, I also want to make sure that I trade with him when his rage bar is not up. When his rage bar is up, I need to be more scared of him going for something like a stun, like he might go for here. And then once his rage is gone, that's when I go more around that. But a big thing with Jace is playing around your runes. So if you're going electrocute, you want to try to get three things of damage whether that's an auto attack and two abilities two auto attacks and ability three auto attacks whatever 
you just want to get three somehow but again here i'm playing around my priority i'm easily able to fight and i'm able to kill the vi simply because i have that priority in lane you're very good with active junglers like elise sin in the uh, top lane due to the fact that you can easily help your jungler out there so you saw here i played around my prio i had the poke under the the renekton and i easily stub all the lane just by helping out in the 2v2 odd scuttle so that's just going to be really the most important thing in top lane is playing around your conqueror and playing around the fact that you have range when most others don't okay guys so this next example i just want to show you guys the strength of jace which is not always just the 1v1 Jace is very good at keeping people stuck in the lane when they want to roam. So here, for example, TF is a champion that very much wants to roam. And you can see here, I'm really bullying him out. But I don't really want to focus on the laning because I've already talked about a lot about the laning. What I want to focus on is how you can pressure an enemy who wants to do something different from you, especially roam, um, and take a lot of plates. So Jace is very fast at split pushing due to the fact that you have your second ability as well as demolish. Um, your second ability on your range form as well as demolish is going to allow you to usually take two plates if anyone leaves for even a small amount of time. So my goal here against this Twisted Fate, since I know that he really wants to roam at level 5 because of his ultimate. He wants to go help out different lanes. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try to keep him in lane. What I should have built here is Hallbreaker. I didn't build Hallbreaker, but I should have. And the reason for that is because I can keep him in lane even longer. That way I can keep shoving the lane, keep it on his side of the map. That way he's forced to keep clearing waves. Meanwhile, as soon as he ever uses his ultimate... I am simply able to get multiple plates because I have the lane pushing in a way that I want. Um, I can also freeze the lane and deny him gold if he roams, but it's usually more... Uh, that's that's when, if I think that there are junglers nearby. If I think there are junglers nearby, I'm going to want to freeze it like I'm doing here. And then other times, I'm going to want to shove the lane or keep it on his side of the map, pushing so that he has to clear the wave and has to be worried about me taking his plates. Uh, what this does is, again, it punishes him for ever using his ultimate because then I get plates. That way, I'm not as worried about him roaming and, like, killing my bot lane or something because he loses a lot for it. So here you're going to see we try to fight here, but we don't really end up getting much. But what I want to skip to, again, you're going to see I'm always keeping some amount of my wave in the lane. So he always has to deal with it, and he's never really able to uh, roam. This is really good against champions like TF or like Galio with global ultimates, but it's also really good against assassins doing this because assassins really want to roam, and if they're not able to roam, then they're not able to get kills or impact the rest of the map. Meanwhile, you can keep the priority here, and you can also uh, help your jungler if your jungler is ever ro rotating or fighting like at, at Scuttle or invading or stuff like that. Meanwhile, again, the Twisted Fates is never really able to roam here. Now you're going to see here, I think he's going to use his ultimate. Uh, he, you can see here, again, I have a wave pushing. I have my wave coming soon. And instead of following him on his roam, which I can't really do, I'm going to clear this wave as fast as possible. And what that allows me to do is, again, get multiple plates. You're going to see how fast here that I take the plates. I'll, I'll actually go back and show you guys. So you're going to see I switched my range form. And as soon as my uh, second ability is up, I use that. And then I switched my melee form to get as much damage as possible. I actually didn't do that. So that was a mistake by me here. I made a mistake here. But what I should have done is I should have used my second ability in my range form and then switched to my melee form to get max damage. But either way, I got two plates out of that and I got to my first item and I'm very strong before the team fight. Even if TF manages to get a kill, I even that out by the plates I get. And if he doesn't get a kill, which is entirely possible and it happened in this situation, I just get a massive lead and I'm able to snowball this game and, and keep taking turrets and plates and help at objectives while having more gold than my opponent. Okay guys, so now I want to talk about team fighting with Jace, and so there's kind of two things, or rather the late game in general, but first team fighting with Jace. Typically Jace needs to be poking people out before the fight starts because you have a lot of poke with your first ability plus third ability combo in your range form. You're going to see here, I'm going to find a unique angle around to go to poke people. I'm not going to go straight with my team, I don't want to just be sitting right next to my teammates. Instead I want to find angles where I can get good poke onto people, so you see I'm going to go around here, I'm going to try to poke them out, I messed up. But I'm going to wait again, I'm going to already go up, auto attack the, the Kha'Zix, poke him down a bit. I'm going to get a nice shock blast on and then poke them down again. I'm going to go around. And what this does here is I'm very susceptible to taking a lot of damage and getting bursted down. So instead, I'm finding a unique angle to take the fight. Uh, poke them out kind of while they're dealing with other people. And then clean them up with my melee form. So really what you want to do in team fights in general with Jace, you want to poke them out. You want to let your teammates engage. Once they're low, that's when you start to go in with your melee form, especially when you're building this more lethality squishy build because you're not really able to engage, so instead just poking people out, getting them low, and then finishing them off with your melee form is typically the way to go in teamfights. Alright guys, so not every game is going to be as simple as just poking people out and winning teamfights. Especially when you're behind, it's much more effective to play on the side lanes and try to draw more people to you so that your team can make plays on other parts of the map. Typically when you're split pushing, you only really want to do this with Hallbreaker on Jace most often, but you want to split, split push on the opposite side of the objective. So Baron is spawning, 
So I want to pressure the other side of the map. I'm looking if anyone's here. I know that Diana's nearby, but I think I can probably 1v1 her. So I'm like, okay, let me push up. Let me get some vision and then slowly push up, build my Holebreaker minion wave up. My team's fighting on the top side of the map. So I'm going to go try to take a turret now because they're distracted with other people. This is typically what you want to do. Uh, you might die sometimes for it and that's okay because you're, even though I'm dying, look, I got Diana flash. I got Diana alt out. I end up flashing, I try to get out, and you're gonna see here in a second, someone ends up catching up to me, um, and I end up dying, we'll show that so you guys can see that, but yeah. So we try to outplay on the side lane, because you're a very good side lane champ, 1v1, but then someone ends up coming, um, the Karma. So we end up dying, but we draw two people, we get a Diana Flash, we get a Diana Alt, and we buy time for uh, our Mundo to now split push on the other side of the map. Even though we're behind significantly in this game, we're able to create plays on the side lane, and just kind of draw out the game for our scaling Vayne and Lulu to really get online. And then you're going to see here again, we're going to do the exact opposite thing when the dragon's spawning on the bottom side of the map. You can see here, I now go to the top side of the map and I decide to split push here. Kaisa and Karma can't clear my minion wave when I have the hull breaker up and nobody's near me. Um, so you're going to see here the next wave I'm going to build up. It's going to be a hull breaker wave. It's going to be very hard for Kaisa to kill it or for Karma to kill it. Uh, they're going to try, but they're just not going to be able to do anything. And I'm just going to draw multiple people here. Meanwhile, my team can go for the dragon. Or the, you can see my Mundo split pushing on the other side of the map. And so I'm going to try to go onto the Karma here. I'm going to end up killing the Karma, but I am going to die for it because I made a bit of a mistake there. But either way, what we do there, we create pressure. We trade one for one. We allow our Vayne, our Lulu, our Kha'Zix to scale up and play for the later parts of the game. Meanwhile, my Mundo on the other side of the map, as you can see here, is taking multiple inhibs. So what we're basically doing is we're just drawing the game out and we're drawing people to different sides of the map so that they can't make a play together and they can't just end the game by getting Baron or something. And that's typically how you want to play the late games as Jace when you're building that Hallbreaker and when you're more behind and you're not as able to snowball in the team fights. Okay, so that's going to do it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, this Rank 1 Jace guide. Again, we went over just, you know, the builds, uh, the combos, how to play them in the early game, how to play them in the later parts of the game, all that type of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions about Jace, you could come to my Twitch. I'm going to be playing Jace pretty much every day over there in the mid lane. Um, or you could leave comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you for watching.